Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. This Sunday, as you know, is what we call the Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. Today, Father Joseph and I will be giving a reflection about the Divine Mercy. And I invite you all, especially your families, uh, to join us and let us reflect and learn together how important this devotion of the divine mercy in our lives. And before we start, let us pray first. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. You know the prayer, Jesus, I trust in you, dear to so many of the devout, clearly expresses the attitude with which we too would like to abandon ourselves trustfully, into the hands of our Lord Jesus, our Savior. O Lord, our Savior, you are burning with the desire to be loved, and those in tune with the sentiments of your heart learn how to build the new civilization of love. A simple act of abandonment is enough to overcome the barriers of darkness and sorrow, of doubt and desperation. The rays of your divine mercy Restore hope in a special way to those who feel overwhelmed by the burden of sin. We ask you, O Lord, to open our hearts and minds to be able to say yes always to your will. That whatever we may happen in our lives, we will always trust you. Mary, Mother of Mercy, help us always to have this trust in your Son, our Redeemer, help us too. Saint Faustina, whom we remember today with special affection, fixing our weak gaze on the divine Savior's face, we would like to repeat with you, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the divine mercy image of Jesus is not another ordinary holy picture of Jesus. It is an image Jesus himself revealed to Saint Faustina and commanded her to have it painted. Jesus promised mainly graces to those who venerate this image and wanted it made known throughout the whole world. As you know, on February 22, 1931, Saint Faustina wrote in her diary notes, number 47 to 48, In the evening, when I was in my cell, I saw the Lord Jesus clothed in a white garment. On one hand was raised in the gesture of blessing, the other was touching the garment at the breast. From beneath the garment, is lightly drawn aside at the breast. There were emanating two large rays, one red, the other pale. In silence, I kept my gaze fixed on the Lord. My soul was struck with awe, but also with great joy. And then she continues. After a while, Jesus said to me, Paint an image according to the pattern you see. With the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated, first in your chapel and then throughout the world. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself, will defend it as my own glory. And Jesus also told her, I am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces to the fountain of mercy. That vessel is this image with a signature, Jesus, I trust in you. That we can see in the diary notes number 327. And sometimes later, St. Faustina's confessor told her to ask the Lord Jesus 
the meaning of the two rays in the image. And so, what does the image mean? Now, I invite you to look at this image. The image of the divine mercy represents the risen Christ, whose hands and feet bear the marks of crucifixion. And St. Faustina wrote in her notebook, During prayer, I heard these words within me, the two rays, these two rays, as you see, denote blood and water. The pale ray stands for the water which makes souls righteous. And the red ray stands for the blood which is the life of souls. So these two rays issued forth from the very depths of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by a lance on the cross. So my dear brothers and sisters, in other words, these two rays signify the sacraments of mercy. That is baptism and penance and a Eucharist. And the Eucharist is the blood of souls carrying life-sustaining food for our spiritual journey. The water is analogous to the sacraments of baptism and penance. In that, through the sacraments, our souls wash clean. First letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 11 said, But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the spirit of our God. And we can read in the diary of number 299, Happy is the one who will dwell in their shelter, said Jesus, for the just hand of God shall not lay hold on him. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, on another occasion, Jesus told Saint Faustina, My gaze from this image is like my gaze from the cross. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. And sometimes before the first Sunday after Easter, that was in, on April 1935, Jesus has told her, I desire that this image be displayed in public on the first Sunday after Easter. That Sunday is the Feast of Mercy. To the Word incarnate, I make known the bottomless depths of my mercy. And that's why, since the year 2001, the second Sunday of Easter has been consecrated by the Church to celebrate the Feast of the Divine Mercy. It is a, an outcome or result or effect of the devotion started by a Polish nun named Saint Faustina to whom Jesus revealed the message of his divine and merciful love. So, so the second Sunday of Easter is the Divine Mercy Sunday, the day that our Lord Jesus Christ promised to Sister Faustina in the 30s that he would bestow his divine mercy to any sinner that totally repents his sins, no matter how great. And our Lord would not refuse any soul that seeks his mercy. And Sister Faustina was declared a saint on April 30th, 2000, by Saint John Paul II. The Lord appeared to Faustina several times, declaring this extremely simple message. The heart of Jesus is overflowing with divine mercy towards sinners and wants all to come to him with trust-filled love. Now, Father Joseph will continue. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, so, Father Jeff, we talk about the picture of uh, the divine mercy, and yet, we see that the picture of the divine mercy, that look at his eyes, so his eyes look at you intensely, he gazes at you, waiting for you to come to, the, to him, and um, you see the right hand, he bless you. 
He blessed you with his blessing and peace. So the left hand is pointing at the heart that yet from my heart, I have the ocean of mercy for you. And of course, that we talk about the image of the divine mercy. And if we don't talk about Sister Faustinas, then uh, we may missing a little part, you know. So I, I want to uh, direct you to uh, uh, Sisters Faustinas. So she was born in August 25th, 1905. And her original name was Helen Kowalski, born in the village of Glowaki, Turkey, country of uh, Lourdes province in Poland. Yet, so, at the first times that she received the um, first communion, so she feel the presence of Jesus there, just the feeling. Yet, after receiving communion, she went home, and one of her neighbors said, oh, you, you go alone, you go by yourself. And she says, I'm not alone. She means that she with Jesus. Jesus is with her. So she always, always address that we, which means that Jesus and her. Yet that's very important. And the Lord showed her that you have to go to Warsaw and you started from there. Amazingly, that she locked at the doors knock at the doors of a lot of uh, convents at the moment, but she were rejected, rejected. Until yet she turned back, she go back there on the year August 1st, 1925. So eventually she was accepted by the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy and yet, she joined the convent there. And yet, the important day that Father Delphin said that the Lord appeared to her and asked her, do you have the picture draw and to be venerated? Especially that she was confused by what does this mean? So she wrote this. When I told this to my confessor, that I have the message from the Lord saying that you, you draw this picture. So I received this for a reply that refers to your soul. So the confessor told her. He told her that certainly paint God's image in your soul. When I came out of the confessional, I again heard words such as this. My image already is in your soul. I desire that there be a feast of mercy. I want this image, which you will paint with a brush, to be solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter. That Sunday is called the Feast of Mercy. Yet, the Lord very clear. That image is not in our soul or in her soul, but the Lord cleared to her that have to paint by the purse physically that we can see, that we can venerate. And the Lord promised that yet whoever venerates this picture, this image, the Lord will defend that person at the dead. So now, Father Delphine, we're going to talk about how do we do the devotion to this image. As you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the Divine Mercy is very famous now all over the world. And maybe some of you is also a devotee of this Divine Mercy. That's why in my first um, reflection, I mentioned to you the word devotion. Because, as you know, there are many people who are devotee to this divine mercy. And when we say devotion, we need to understand first. When we say devotion, the meaning of this word, so in the root sense of the word, it means 
consecration. In the root sense of the word, it means consecration. means giving of oneself completely. It is like a dedication by solemn vow. But in a religious context, devotion is an attitude. It is an attitude of caring about God and all that God cares about. It involves a decision and a commitment that pervades our lives, giving direction and form to all our actions. Among these actions are that we call devotions. So that is, that is with S, devotions, specific religious attitudes, prayers, and practices that express and nurture our devotion, our total consecration to God. Thus, devotions can be of very real value, both as a witness to others and as a fruitful way of growing in personal holiness. You know, the Constitution of the, on the Sacred Liturgy, presented by the Second Vatican Council, teaches that popular devotions of the Christian people are warmly commended as long as they are in accord with the laws and norms of the church. So from the diary of the Polish nun named Sister Faustina, a special devotion to the mercy of God is spreading throughout the world. It's spreading throughout the world. You see, just like the coronavirus is spreading all over the world. But this one is in a different way. This devotion is spreading throughout the world with the message of what? Message is nothing new. Just a reminder of what the church has always taught. And you know what the church has always taught us? That God is merciful. That God is forgiving. And that we too must show mercy and forgiveness. But in a divine mercy devotion, the message takes on a powerful new focus. Calling people to a deeper understanding that God's love is unlimited, that God's love is unending, that God's love is overflowing and available to everyone, especially the greatest sinners. The greater the sinner, the greater the right he has to my mercy, according to the diary of St. Faustina, number 723. And some of the elements of this new focus include a sacred image of the merciful Savior, several new prayers, and an abundance or bounty of promises. But the main elements are trust and deeds of mercy. Those are the two elements. Devotion to the divine mercy involves a total commitment, a total commitment to God as mercy. It is a decision to accept His mercy with thanksgiving, to trust completely in Him, and to be merciful as He is merciful. So that's why, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus attached many promises to those who venerate the image of this divine mercy. And what's the, what does it mean to venerate an image? It simply means we regard with great respect and reverence the person portrayed in the painted image of divine mercy, an action which is not contrary to the first commandment, that is, you shall have no other gods before me. And maybe I believe that some of you, when you look, when you look at your wallet, or maybe you have in your house the image of the divine mercy, but you know, people carry pictures of their loved ones in their wallets. This does not mean they love the picture per se. Rather, it reminds them of someone they truly love. 
So that's why, my dear brothers and sisters, it is an invitation for all of us that every time you pass by this beautiful image of Jesus, now as you look maybe at your altar or in the corner of your house or in your wallet, He is looking right into your soul. And, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, it is an opportunity to thank Jesus by a gesture of a bow, making the sign of the cross, or even encourage a little child to blow a kiss to Jesus. So that's why we have to thank the Lord, thank the church that we always celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday every second Sunday of Easter. Now, Father Joseph will give something more. As we know that we have this image to um, God revealed himself to St. Faustiners. And she, some, there's a moment that she feels like, I'm not worthy, I don't know what to do. I'm too young, just like the prophet uh, Jeremiah telling the Lord that I'm just as young, just a youth, so I don't know what to say. Pick someone else, please. The same thing with Sister Faustina. She say that, and the Lord told her that this is your assignments. If you don't do that, many souls suffering. Also your soul will suffer. And the Lord said that before I came as the just judge, I am coming first as the king of mercy. Yet Jesus coming to us as king of mercy. So our part is that to come to him, to accept his mercy. That's the gift that he, he wants to give us. So I recall that every time that uh, for me, before I um, receive uh, confirmation or um, ordinations or for you, before you get being married, so we suggest you to, to go to confession, right? In order to prepare your soul to accept and to receive fully the grace from God. They have no obstacle that block, that take room in your soul. So therefore you go to confession in order to make room for God's mercy to flow into your soul. So, so during this uh, second Sunday of Easter, so we celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy. And if in a regular year, which we don't have the, um, the uh, pandemic, then we suggest you to go to confession. But what can you do now since we cannot go to confession to receive God's mercy uh, to our reconciliation with him? So yet Pope Francis said that in this time, the pandemic time, we cannot go out of the house since we keep social distancing six feet away or don't gather a big crowd. So which the Pope suggests that God is our Father. He is our Father. In a time that you need to go to confession, you make a perfect act of contrition and you confess to God during these times. Yes, in a regular time, you have to go to confess to the priest. But during these times, you are permit to talk directly to God, to say what you have done bad, to say that, yes, so many ugly things that I have done. So now you ask God to forgive you. And you promise that in, as soon as that everything come back to normal, you go to confession to the priest, yet that's acceptable. So my brothers and sisters, in two more days, today is Friday, in this Sunday, second Sunday of Easter, the church celebrates the Feast of the Divine Mercy. So I wish you peace of God, the Divine Mercy, the mercy of God will flow into your hearts 
abundantly. May God bless each of you. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit.